Good morning and welcome entrepreneurs and Merry Christmas. You are sitting on a product in your garage, you got a few samples, it's a great idea, and you just don't know where to go from here. I'll tell you a little story, the Shad Quack story. I was 25 years old, had an idea. I already owned a company called Jennings Decoy Company, manufactured wildlife giftware, started in 1982. Had $500 in a dream, a partner. When I started, my wife was still disabled from a serious illness called Guillain-Barre, but she was recovering. So I said, what the heck? Let's give her a go. My mom was terrified for me. But here's the shad quack. A novelty fishing lure. Kind of cool. Looks like a little flying mallard duck. A drake. We also painted it in a loon pattern, even though they don't fish with loons, but you don't really fish with mallard ducks either. However, it was a lot of fun. Started in January. We had a time frame to have it ready to ship by May 10th, which we did. Had no idea how to produce a novelty lure, or a fishing lure. But we had an idea and we had the gumption so we had a master carb. My brother worked for me at the time, Mark. He carved one out of wood. Then we had this molded out of injection and molding process and a company by Clear Lake, just local from St. Cloud. Figured out how to paint and mass produce some painted. Some of the things like the eyes, if you can see, are actually a little decal. Sort of the little blue wing patches here. Everything else was either hand sprayed or hand painted. You can see the loon, the actual white patches and the dots are all done by hand. The, the black was sprayed over. The bodies were actually formatted in a white plastic so we didn't have to do anything on the bottom. Found a little company that hired retired folks down in uh, south of us in Minnesota but they would put them together. They would put the the cows on, they'd put the eyes on, they'd put the hooks on them and the little, the little eyelet for to hook it on your line or your yeah. Um, the clasp on your fishing rod and reel and they caught fish it was a lot of fun I got a picture of a friend of mine who caught one up in Canada on about a seven pound northern so it was a lot of fun but the marketing is of course after the production part the marketing was the key to its success and we sold thousands and thousands of these in both styles although the mallard was a little more more uh, popular here's the packaging we created this package it's about six inches tall, about four and a half inches wide, but the key was the story. So on the back, I created a fictional fisherman called Virgil Waterwacker. Back at the time, there was a guy on TV called Virgil Ward, and he was kind of the first big name on fishing shows on television. So that's where I got the first name, the Waterwacker. Of course, it's just one I made up. But here, I'll read you the story. This is key. The Shad Cat Quack was developed by fishing enthusiast Virgil Waterwacker in the waters of the Upper Mississippi River. I live on the Mississippi, just north of St. Clouds of Central Minnesota. His idea sprouted as he sat feeding the ducks in the river when suddenly the water parted and a cavernous mouth inhaled a full-grown mallard duck right in front of him. Old Virgil figured he was on to a hot new fishing idea and after months of development, the Shad Quack was born, or hatched. <laughs> Then I had a little bullet points of information, helpful professional fishing instructions. Number one, strap yourself to your seat for fear that the big one will pull you in. Number two, toss your shad quack in the general direction of water. Number three, prepare yourself for the fight of a lifetime when a monster whopper attacks your shad quack. Number four, in case of slow biting whoppers, reel your shad quack in erratically like a wounded duck. Five. For real action with dogfish, silk your shad quack with duck scent. Number six, in further case of slow action, reel in your shad quack and untie your line, toss out the multi-purpose shad quack, remove shotgun from the case, load and prepare yourself for a great day of shooting. And a few other uses for your shad quack, the perfect depth finder, just add five ounces of lead weight. A training dumber for your schnauzer, but be sure to remove the hooks. Used during hunting season as a miniature flying decoy, and of course, number four in the separate bullet points is a great conversation piece in your trophy mode's mouth. So, 
Lastly, we put on the bottom a perfect gift for that hard to buy Fort Hunter fisherman who has everything else you can imagine. In other words, that was our call to action. So we had kind of a two prong approach. We had a, some buyers already for some of our other products, some stores around central part of the US, mostly in Minnesota. But the key was there was a big time morning show DJ duo by the name of Nap and Donuts on KS95. And he was a fishing nut, Nap Donuts was. So the week before opening a fishing, which is a huge event in Minnesota, if you've never been part of it, it's like every, uh, every automobile heading north on that Friday before the opener is pretty much just pulling a boat. So I sent it to him and he read it. The whole story, the Shad Quack story, on morning drive time twice, the Thursday and Friday before the opening day of fishing. Of course, huge public relations event for us. And they loved it. The people loved it. And we sold thousands and thousands. The stores were gobbling them up. I would get on my phone back. As soon as I got more inventory in, we were shipping them out, and, and they were reordering. Um, and then the key was that I got it into Bass Pro. Bass Pro at the time was the biggest fishing retailer in the country. And now, you know, Cabela's is maybe about the same, but Bass Pro is still huge and they were by far the biggest, most mail order in their big stores down south. And eventually, they didn't take it the first year, but by the time I got through the buyers, they took it for two or three years after that initial, uh, initial launch, and it was terrific. They would order by the gross, uh, we'd ship them down, and Give them a little bit of discount, but, but not too bad, and we still made money on it. But of course, one thing it helped, and as you get into more in your manufacturing processes, you know that volume certainly helps your pricing because when you know you've got big orders coming in and you know they're going to pay like Bass Pro always did, you can ramp up your production, which cuts down in your cost because generally speaking, the more you make, uh, the lower your production costs are. Great story. Uh, give me a call or go to my website and steveresolutions.com. We can talk more about it. I've got a bunch of blogs on there talking about my business experience. I'm 57 years old now and I've been in business and entrepreneur since I was 23. Um, look forward to more of my videos. We'll share some, uh, we'll share some more uh, highlights of my professional business life and, and how I can possibly help you get your product from ground zero to the stratosphere. Have a great day.